This movie will show you how you can communicate from our engine logbook to our compression ratio calculator. Here we are in the logbook, and you can see there's lots of places to put just about any dimension from the engine you want. Right now, we have nothing entered because we just started the program. Everything is blank. And you can see up here, with, this is where you click on CR for compression ratio calculator. And that brings up our compression ratio calculator. So a message says we're in the compression ratio calculator, and if we had any info from the compression ratio calculator entered, it would have been entered here on this screen. But we didn't, so everything is blank. So you can click on File, and Open, and you pull up an old file that you've done in the compression ratio calculator. Get all your information here. Here you can see we got a cranking compression of 200 and a compression ratio of 10.22. You could change something in here if you wanted. Let's say maybe change the board to 3.93, 30 thousandths over. And now we got a new compression ratio, 10.29 and 202. When you shut down the compression ratio calculator, when you quit it, when it's been started from the engine logbook, you got three choices. Yes, we'll let you save all your changes here and pull them back to the engine logbook. No, we'll let you return to the engine logbook and abandon all your changes you've made here. Or cancel, which will basically just keep you in the compression ratio program. We're going to keep these changes and bring them back to the logbook with us. So we click on yes. You're back in the logbook. We click on OK. And you can see here's the information from the compression ratio calculator. We've got our stroke. We've got our rod length. We've got a piston compression height. Uh, we don't see everything here from the uh, compression ratio calculator. So let's turn on more options to allow for more inputs. Let's say complete engine. Now if we look at some of the other tabs here, here's where you can see the bore size and now it has increased to 3.93. Here's the deck height. And if we look over here on um, the head, in the head, well down here we have the chamber volume. And if we look at engine math, you can see here is the 10.29 and the 202 crank and compression. So you can see everything is consistent, everything makes sense. The other thing you can do is you click on file, open, open an engine logbook file. The only reason I'm doing this is to fill in everything. You want to say what we've done? No. And now we have a complete engine where you can see we've filled out everything. This is pretty typical of what you're going to be doing most of the time. And here you can see on bore, we put in multiple inputs here. If we click on bore and look at our multiple readings here, every cylinder has a slightly different bore size because of manufacturing or boring tolerance. In reality, you probably wouldn't have this big a size, but this is just for demonstration. So we have eight different bore sizes, and here you can see the range shown here for bore. And if we do our engine math here. We have a compression ratio being calculated and an estimating crank and compression here. Pretty high compression ratio on this one. So here we have a complete engine, a lot of things filled out, but all the inputs for compression ratio are scattered on these all these different screens. So if you click on compression ratio calculator, one thing that's very nice about this is all the inputs for compression ratio are right here and the deck height clearance. And here you can see that. Uh, 16.33 and the 285 that we had in the other program. And here you can see everything here and you can change things. Maybe the chamber CCs, you want to change that. You want to lower that compression ratio. So we're going to type in, let's say we want to put in 85 CC heads. Okay, that's more normal, 14.46. And let's say we want to change this bore from 4.002, which is the average of what was in the other program because it was a range. And let's say we want to change it to 4.005. We want to keep these changes. We have a 1447 compression ratio and a 243 cranking compression. Now when we shut the program down, same three options, but there's a big note here. Note, these items came from the compression ratio calculator or came into the compression ratio calculator as a range of inputs. What they're talking about is bore here that it came in as a range, the average being 4.002. But now you change it to 4.005, and it's letting you know 
The program won't let you do that. If it came in as a range, you can't change it because that one single number doesn't represent what was that range of numbers in the engine logbook. So bottom line is you can't change the bore. It'll take the change in chamber cc's, but it won't allow the bore change. So anyway, let's click on yes. So we want to do that anyway. Back in the logbook. You can see we got the compression ratio about where it was. Not exactly because it didn't allow the bore change. And here, if you go up here, bore change stayed where it was. But if we go and look at the head, we should see the 85 cc's, and there it is, 85 cc's. So the bottom line is, with this new option of compression ratio calculator, the link, you can jump back and forth between the logbook, where you have hundreds of inputs, and condense all the compression ratio and the deck height clearance and all these little nice calculation utilities from this program. Use it and take the results back to the logbook. That concludes this demo.